You ever working on something really important and the power goes out? All right, so if you notice all the power shut off with my server still running, that beeping is my UPS letting me know that we lost power, but the server's still up and going. So what I'm gonna do is I want the rest of my business to stay on when there's a power loss. So I'm gonna install an entire UPS for my whole business. Now, before we begin, let's talk a little bit about UPSs and what they do. I've got a few different versions here Schneider sent me. Thank you, Schneider, for sending me a whole bunch of UPSs, but there's a few different types that we have, and there's one that we don't even have here, which you will see here in a minute. That's a monster UPS. Sneak preview. So we've got some smaller versions like this, it's 425 VA or 255 watts. You'll notice on these that it says battery plus surge where over here it just says surge. So a lot of UPSs actually come with surge protection. Did you know that surge protection has nothing to do with lightning protection? So a lot of people think surge protector, oh, it's gonna protect against lightning because on the marketing, on the packages, they put a little lightning bolt, but it has nothing to do with lightning. All a surge is, is when a piece of equipment turns on, say like an air conditioner, turns on, it sends so much current at first that it surges the entire electrical system inward. So by any piece of equipment turning on and surging constantly over and over, it can wear out electronic components over time. So surge protector just kind of cut the peaks and valleys, the tops and the bottoms uh, off of a spike every time it surges. Now we do put whole house surge protection on homes as well, and that's usually to protect any kind of line surges from the utility company inward, but you can also have small surge protectors on pieces of equipment as an added layer of protection, but it has nothing to do with lightning. Now you know. All right, so before we get into installing one of these UPSs, let's talk about what a UPS is. It is an uninterruptible power supply. Uninterruptible being the key word there. Uninterruptible. So if you have things hooked up to this and you lose power, there's batteries inside of here that keep you going without interruption. Whereas a generator is really good with backup power, generators have to be started. So a lot of times, even if you have an automatic transfer switch, it will detect when power's lost, but it also has to start that generator and it's gasoline powered. So it's just like a regular motor. It has to start, get up to speed and then transfer power. So most of the time with a generator, you still have power loss. Lights go out, your computer's shut off, you lose everything you're working on, but it will start back up so you can regain power. With a UPS, the whole idea is that you don't lose any power. So if I'm working on this and I've got this specific one, this is a great example for a PC. If I'm gonna have my editing PC and if we lose power, at least no matter what everything else in the building is doing, at least my PC will stay running and I can be on that thing editing and I won't even notice that the power went off. I'll just still be able to keep working. So that's the awesome thing about a UPS is it is uninterruptible. Uninterruptible. Uh, both of these are very similar, but this one is specifically meant for gaming. There's a whole bunch of uh, different gaming systems that you can put on here. There's some nice little LEDs and stuff like that. A lot of gamers like to do content creation, so it just looks really cool. And then there are things that you can do with surge protection only or with backup battery and surge protection. But it keeps you going no matter what you're doing. But if I have like a server or if I have like a whole building, that's a little bit different and that's what we're gonna get into next. So now let's talk about how they actually work. So how does an uninterruptible power supply actually work? Um. So UPSs, all of this pretty much exists within the UPS. Typically we'll have utility sending, let's say 120 volts into our house and we've got loads that are 120 volts. It's all alternating current. Well, inside of the UPS, we have to change to DC. So at the same time that we uh, have power coming into our house, we're tapping onto that and bringing it into a rectifier. And all a rectifier does is it takes an alternating current and changes it into a direct current. So that DC feeds into a battery and actually charges the battery and then the battery is just sitting there waiting for power to be lost. When we lose power then, we no longer have power going over the load, so instantaneously without interruption, it changes over to a different source and it chooses to come from the battery instead. But that battery power, if we're sending direct current, 
our house can't run off direct current, right? So it's sending 120 volts of direct current that has to be changed from DC to AC. So an inverter is essentially the opposite as a rectifier. The inverter is just inverting from DC to alternating current and it's changing the alternating current so the house can run off of AC. If you are looking for continuing education, Electrician U is approved as a continuing education provider. So if you like watching videos like this, why not watch videos like this to get your continuing education? No more of those boring click screens. So there's a link in the description below. It says continuing education. Click that, check your state and get your continuing education today. So a UPS on the inside is essentially just a whole bunch of batteries. Let's talk about handling batteries really quick. Batteries can be extremely dangerous. A lot of people think, oh, it's just a little battery. It's not gonna do anything because they think of this. This is only 1.5 volts, right? There's not a lot to this, but there is a lot of capacity. That's why it's bigger than a double A or a triple A. There's a lot more current that can flow and it's 1.5 volts. But we can get more voltage out of a battery and we can get more amperage out of a battery if we stack multiple of them together. So if we were to take three D batteries like this, each one of these is 1.5 volts. If we were gonna add them in series, meaning in line with each other, positive to negative, positive to negative, we're gonna increase our voltage. So we have 1.5 volts. If we touch this to this, we have three volts. And if we touch, oops, touch this to this, we have 4.5 volts. So now we're increasing our voltage, which can be a lot more dangerous. So anytime you're dealing with batteries in series, just understand you have the same current through this whole thing, but you're increasing the voltage. Now, another really dangerous situation is when we put them in parallel. So if you stack batteries like this, this is parallel. This means that we take all of our positives, connect them together and bring that one wire out to the load, connect all of our negatives together and bring it out to the load. Now we're keeping the voltage the same. It's still only 1.5 volts. Now we have triple the amount of current that can flow. And this can be really dangerous. If we short this situation out, we just connect our positive to our negative. Now we have triple the amount of current that can flow. So that can be an incredible amount of current and it can burn the insulation off the conductors, but it can also make these batteries explode. It's a lot of current flowing at one time. So either way, when we're talking about batteries in series or we're talking about batteries in parallel, we need to be careful when we're stacking batteries. When you're working with batteries, just be very careful. All right, so today I am going to install this beast. This is a 10KW three phase 208 UPS, which means that it is three phase and it gives me 208 volts of battery power. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run power from this, from a three pole 50 breaker into here and then come back out of here and I'm gonna install a panel under here. So this thing drives this entire panel. So during um, a power failure, it's going to instantly switch over without any loss to this panel. So every critical load, every server, computer, everything that I wanna run is through that panel. All right, so let's go. All right, we got this beast hooked up, powered up. We've got good input power. I'm gonna shut that disconnect off and show that these peeps still have power. They're over there working hard, getting stuff done. All right, so here we go. Power to the whole unit. We still got lights on and they are Still working. Ta-da! So in the National Electrical Code, it actually allows us a little bit of room with strapping. When you've got any kind of conduit or cable assembly, most of the time we're supposed to strap within 12 inches of the box or the fitting. But if you need equipment that has to move around, you need a little bit of flexibility for this thing to swing, they actually allow you up to three feet away. So I put this strap, three feet away, that gives me a little bit of flexibility. So if you look at Article 348 for flexible metal conduit under dot 30A, there's an exception. 
and it says where flexibility is necessary after installation, lengths from the last point where the raceway is securely fastened shall not exceed the following. And it says three feet for any conduits that are a half inch through an inch and a quarter. This is three quarter conduit. So it allows me three feet of flexibility just to move this equipment if I need to. I don't have to be strapped within 12 inches of the equipment. So I think that's pretty cool. That gives me backup power long enough for us to keep working or at least save everything and shut everything down. You can get more capacity out of these things. You could add entire banks of batteries. You can run multiple of these. The more batteries you add, the more capacity that you get during power failure. So I just think they're rad. You should think they're rad. If you wanna find out more about them, there's a link in the description below. Click on the Schneider Electric Easy UPS. Love you crazy people. Thanks for watching. See you next time.